Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's get started. So as you can see from today, we start a new series of uh, videos related to cloud technologies. So every Wednesday, I will release a new video related to cloud. Yeah, so today we have just an overview what are the reasons why uh, you or organization might want to migrate to cloud yeah, so today we just talk in general yeah but uh, in the next videos we'll uh, focus on aws amazon web services cloud so we'll talk about uh, services provided by aws how we use them and so on yeah, so if you want to become a aws cloud guru so this channel is a good fit for you yeah, so don't forget by the way to subscribe to you uh, to it if you haven't done that yet also don't forget to visit my website available at blog.dataguru.guide yeah, so as usual on saturdays we'll have uh, java related videos yeah, and once again on wednesdays i will post a new video related to cloud technologies yeah, so agenda for today what will be covered so first We'll talk about uh, on-premise model, so to say, so where we have uh, some servers owned by organization and hosted by it. Yeah? So we'll compare what is the default traditional computational model or uh, on-premise hosting uh, versus cloud technologies. And then we'll talk about use cases, uh, why we would like uh, to migrate to cloud or when uh, the use cases when we would like to use cloud instead of on-premise model uh, so on-premise model so when we host uh, on-premise or we say we have servers on servers on premise it means that uh, servers are hosted by the organization itself in a data center are called on-premise yeah so if uh, you as an organization owns uh, some servers and you host them by yourself in a dedicated data center or for example in your basement yeah so that's is uh, on-premise model or, and the servers are on-premise servers yeah so that means uh, that organization owns servers and all underlying infrastructure yeah so you own these servers and all infrastructure like uh, networking uh, cables security procedures uh, cooling uh, electricity related things so that's owned by you yeah? and that means you are also responsible for uh, server security uh, so it's up to you to set up uh, security procedures so how you configure your firewalls uh, access control lists on your uh, uh, routers and so on so that's up to you so the same applies to updates yeah so you have an operating systems uh, running on servers so it's up to you uh, how you update them what are the practices you use whether you update it on regular uh, schedule or you update it uh, when something new is being released so for example a new update has been released so you immediately update it or you don't update your operating system and software at all so it's up to you yeah? so you are responsible for managing that and also upgrades yeah? right so you bought a server maybe at that time it was uh, quite powerful but after one or two years so you see that uh, it's not enough for you anymore yeah so your demand for uh, computation has raised yeah so you uh, installed uh, new applications or updated existing ones to a new versions so the system requirements are higher and you see that your existing servers are not able to uh, provide the needed level of performance so you need to upgrade your servers yeah to add some ram uh, storage capacity maybe 
um, great CPU and so on. So you are responsible for that. Huh? So what are the downsides of using that on-premise model or on-premise resources? Yeah, so just uh, think of a situation. So for example, what to do if you need more computation resources at some specific uh, time moments. Yeah? So let's say you have your server, you host an application or uh, website. So under a normal load, yeah, so everything works fine. So your server is able to deal with that, but at some specific um, moments. So for example, you release a new article or post a new video. Uh, so the demand or the number of requests uh, rises a lot and your server is not able to deal with them all. So some requests are dropped. So user experience is not that good. Yeah, so, but how, how you can uh, tackle this problem? So what can you do if you have your own server? Yeah, so basically the only thing you can do is to upgrade your server uh, to add some uh, computational power. Yeah, but uh, the problem is that uh, this demand is uh, very short in time. Yeah, so you posted a new article, the number of uh, connection requests or the number of users which visit your si uh, website, it rises. Yeah, but after uh, some hours or a couple of days, it drops once again. So your server is not is once again able to uh, deal with that load. Yeah. So does it mean that you need to upgrade your server or buy a new server just to uh, be able to deal with this high demand, which uh, is uh, let's say two or three hours uh, long during a week? Yeah? So for total. Uh, 10 or 12 hours per month, but you need to invest thousands of dollars to buy a new server. So is it a good deal? Uh, most probably it's not. Huh? Imagine another situation. You host your uh, server in your basement, let's do, uh, so to say, or in your data center. And <clears throat> what happens if you uh, lose your connectivity? Uh, to data center due to internet link failure. Yeah, so your data center is connected uh, to internet, so your uh, clients can visit your website, so you connect your data center to internet. But what happens if that uh, link fails? Yeah, so that means your uh, web uh, site is not available uh, to your customers. Yeah? So what to do? You can uh, by a second redundant internet link yeah and configure your router accordingly so it can fail over to another one if uh, the primary fails uh, the downside of that is that you need to pay for that second connection even even if it uh, it's not used uh, uh, another uh, possible scenario so uh, what to do if there is a natural disaster, for example, flood or hurricane and so on. So your data center is not available or even destroyed. So what to do? Uh, so do you have uh, some kind of backups? So how do you manage backups of your data? Yeah, so how you do that backups, how you automate that, how you make them redundant. So, for example, you backed up your uh, data at another uh, hard disk drive, but uh, for example, you lost it, it's stolen, it's corrupted, so you can't uh, retrieve this data. Yeah, and where you store that? So, you should think about that, and it's quite important question. Yeah. How you can automate the restore of data out of backups? So, for example, uh, you backed up your data yeah, and uh, your entire server failed. Yeah, so, all uh, disks uh, connected to that server are corrupted. So, you need to restore your data. So, let's say you have 
backups available but uh, how you do the restore uh, so you need to buy new hard disk drives connect them to a server copy data from backup and so on yeah, but how you can automate that process yeah, so cloud can help you and another major thing is that you need uh, constantly to invest money in server upgrade yeah so as i said so you bought a server it was uh, good at that point of time but as time goes yeah, after one or two years yeah, you install new versions of applications system requirements are higher so you see that these applications uh, do not perform as you wanted so uh, you need to upgrade your hardware so you need to invest additional money yeah, so that would be some of the downsides. Yeah, you can easily uh, think about others as well. Yeah, so all that problems or uh, issues could be mitigated if we use cloud solution. Yeah, so for example, when we talked about these uh, peaks. Uh, in requests, yeah, so cloud resources could be scaled in and out if and then needed, yeah, so if uh, amount of visitors on uh, your website has grown dramatically, yeah, so cloud can uh, scale scale out, yeah, roll out uh, new resources, so your users still will be served as as they should yeah? so once demand shrinks yeah, so uh, resources uh, provided to you will also scale in yeah? meaning that the amount of resources will reduce yeah? so perfect solution uh, when we talked about connectivity so connectivity uh, to the cloud is redundant and always highly available yeah? so there are multiple links from multiple providers so even if one of the links fail still your resources are accessible and of course you are not uh, additionally charged for that redundancy yeah? so we're talking about disasters each cloud solution use multiple availability zones or regions depending on uh, uh, which uh, type of redundancy and high availability you would like to have make your data secure from natural disasters yeah? so also cloud uh, provide an automated way how you can do your backups and also if and then needed you can also automatically restore your data so once it's detected that data is corrupted or it's not available it will be automatically restored from backups so your involvement involvement even is not needed yeah and also cloud provider upgrade servers by himself yeah? so once it see that uh, uh, the resources uh, provided are not in sync what is now demanded yeah so they will upgrade uh, underlying servers by themselves with of course no additional charges to the client yeah so that's that the bonus yeah? so use cases so when cloud should be used yeah so for example if you experience predict unpredictable loads yeah so from time to time your website experience unpredictable strikes of the load so you need to respond by provisioning new resources and shrink them uh, once demand falls yeah so that's a very good uh, use case for a cloud another one for your business you need redundant high available uh, and fault tolerant uh, servers and applications available for your customers yeah. also very good use case for the cloud uh, you want to automate data backups securely securely store it and restore if then needed yeah we also discussed that uh, 
you need to be able to automatically fail over to another server or to another application in a different region in case of disaster. So uh, cloud also can provide you that. And uh, the most uh, uh, sensible, I would say, benefit of a cloud is that you want to save money and pay for the resources you really need and you use it. Yeah, so once you don't need resources, you can shrink your resources and pay for the minimum resources. Once demand raises, uh, new resources, computational resources has been rolled out and you pay a bit more. Once you don't need resources, shrinks uh, once again and you don't pay for them. So that's the uh, most uh, touchable benefit of cloud. So um, pay as you go model about which we will talk uh, next time. Yeah. So that would be all for today. That's just an intro. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, interesting uh, stuff ahead. Uh, so in the next lecture, we'll talk about uh, virtualization. What is that? Because that uh, is the basics for uh, any cloud. Yeah, we'll talk about types of virtualization. So after that, we'll uh, define what cloud actually is. Uh, and uh, then finally, we'll talk about uh, difference between uh, cloud and self-hosted VMs or virtual machines. Yes. Okay. But uh, for today, that would be all. Thanks to all for watching. Would like to hear some feedback from you, whether this uh, topic is interesting for you. I mean, cloud and AWS or maybe is not so interesting. Also, this presentation is available for download at my uh, website, blog.dataguru.guide. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet.